So I just did a video on this channel talking about the news that the WWE and Adnan Ver had agreed to mutually part ways after exactly seven shows with him as the play-by-play -play commentator for Monday Night Raw and talked a lot about how they set him up for failure, how it was incredibly stupid. You should have been able to see this coming. It wasn't going to work. Like, you know, I give him a chance, but very clear that it just wasn't going down. You know what I mean? And it, it was a it was a situation entirely of Vince McMahon's doing. Just really, really bad decision making here. And I don't understand why you would play such games with such a feature part of your cable television empire. Like, why would you take such big chances with such an important role on such an important show for your company? I don't get it. Like, I could see if you were talking about, like, backstage interviewer. Like, maybe, because you, you can pre-tape that stuff. You can rehearse that stuff. You can minimize the amount of time. You can sit there and say, hey, can you at least competently set up one damn question and let the talent go? Like, you could do that. But throwing somebody like Adnan Verk, who was not equipped, was not prepared, into a situation where he's not only going to have to sit there and tell wrestling stories when he clearly didn't understand or get wrestling, and then have to deal with a Vince McMahon or Kevin Dunn in his fucking ear all that night. Like, just a recipe for disaster. I think everybody agrees with that. Didn't really surprise anybody when they found out that they mutually agreed to part ways. So you think about it, you say, okay, so now they need to find a play-by-play -play guy for Monday Night Raw. And you say, okay, who are they going to bring in next? And this, to me, is a perfect example of the true definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting the results to be any different. Now look, I understand that you're not going to be able to bring in a Jim Ross or a Tony Savane from AEW. It's not happening. You're going to kick the tires on a Mike Tanay. The reality is there just aren't a lot of competent play-by-play -play guys left when it comes to professional wrestling. Mauro Ranallo wants nothing to do with the company, and they probably want nothing to do with him at this point. Kevin Kelly, like... You probably have to pay him way too much money for him to even consider ever coming back to work under Vince's umbrella. I think he enjoys what he does. So, the reality is the pickings are kind of slim. And you have to sit there and say, okay, at some point in time you're going to have to throw somebody to the wolves a little bit. But I would think you would typically want to do that on the show that gets half the viewership in NXT. Like maybe you take the person from NXT and you put them in a spot or somebody that's worked in NXT as a play-by-play -play guy, what have you, and find somebody else for that role, but not with this company. They already screwed up once with Adnan Verk. They said, you know what? We learned a lesson. We're going to do the exact same shit again for the most part. We've got a new lead commentator for Monday Night Raw, and it's Jimmy Smith, to which many of you are going to say, who? And I will totally, totally tell you, because I don't watch some of the NXT pre-shows, like for the TakeOver shows. I don't watch those stand-up and deliver pre-shows and that shit. So I had no clue who the hell this was either. So just admittedly, I had to look him up. And I looked it up on Wrestling Inc. and on their site. And they talking about the fact that Jimmy Smith's going to debut as the play-by-play -play voice of Raw. Starting on Memorial Day, May 31st. How appropriate. They're going to start him on what will inevitably be one of the least watched shows of the year. Throw him to the wolves when the fire is not burning as bright. He'll be still calling the action every Monday night with his partners, Corey Graves and Byron Saxton. Um, WWE acknowledged in their announcement that he's worked as an analyst for NXT, NXT serving on the TakeOver Stand and Deliver pre-show panels and working on special projects for the Black and Gold brand, which include the video package for Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross. Also pointed to how he's the host of Sirius's uh, unlocking the cage and previously hosted American Ninja Warrior, so a whole bunch of shit that I don't watch, basically. That's why I'm not familiar with him. And then goes on to talk about how he's been working behind the scenes with Michael Cole and other staffers uh, to train for a potential announcing role. 
Apparently, Michael Cole has praised him heavily, found him to be very versatile. Um, he also had a run from 2010 to 2017 in Bellator MMA. He worked as an analyst um, for Bellator and UFC. Um, he also hosted ESPN's International UFC Fight Camp show. Like, it, it feels like we're doing the exact same damn thing again, doesn't it? Like, you can sit there and say, yeah, he's been training behind the scenes and he's been doing live tryouts and this and that, but the reality is there's nothing quite like getting thrown to the wolves and having to do this shit live and have the pressure of having to do it for three hours every Monday night. Like, that's not an easy task at all. And you go from one guy who didn't have any real-life experience doing it to another guy who doesn't have any real-life experience doing it. Like, look, him calling combat sports is great, and being on some of the NXT pre-shows, wonderful. But it is so much different. You're supposed to be selling the story and the bullshit as you actually are the substance and the action. And admittedly, you come from the MMA world, it is different. It It's some form and elements of professional wrestling, that's for sure, but it's not quite the same. Like in wrestling, you got to sit there and call the action where you're advancing this story that's going on in the ring while potentially advancing other stories throughout the night. Like the dynamics of everything are just different. And part of the problem is, is that you're throwing them into a situation where the guys they're supposed to be feeding off of are not great color commentators. They're just not. And it just feels like we're doing the exact same damn thing again. Like, look, I felt bad for Anon Verk. He took an opportunity, so I don't feel bad for him to taking the opportunity and taking the money. But I knew ultimately he was being set up to fail. Like, how is this situation with Jimmy Smith that much different? What makes this so much more different that we won't be having the same conversation in another 3, 6, or 12 months? Like, I just can't imagine for the life of me just basically throwing these guys to the damn wolves like this. That makes no sense on such an important damn show, too. Like, if, like I said, if it was main event, or you're doing something on the WWE Network, or even NXT, like, at least I could say, you're having them practice the craft in real time, plying their chops, and figuring out what works and what does it, giving them time to grow and develop. There's no time in, to grow and to develop if you're just throwing them straight into the fire in the mix with fucking Raw. And you're talking about what now? This is going to be the third play-by-play -play commentator for Raw this year? Like, look, the commentary sucks. But the commentary, even JR and King at their peak, couldn't save this shit. Heenan and fucking Monsoon, Heenan and Ventura, Vince and Ventura, all those teams on commentary, they couldn't save this shit. You can only shine up a turd but so much until you realize it's still a piece of duty. I just, why would you take, this is the piece I just keep coming back to. I'm sorry to be beating the dead horse. <laughs> Karen? I'm sorry to be beating the dead horse here, but why would you take such an unnecessary foolish risk with one of your flagship marquee shows every week. A show which, by the way, by the way, continues to hemorrhage viewers. How is this going to make your show better? How is this going to bring sizzle? How is this anything other than a complete and total rewind of what you just went through with Adnan Verk in a different package? I mean, think about how crazy and stupid this is, folks. This is their thing. Third play-by-play -play commentator this year. Their third. That's not good for anybody. It's also not good for Grays and Saxton. Dealing with all that turnover, like you're trying to base yourself off of that person and you fucking can't do it because it's changing one week to the damn next. So this guy's called MMA fights for years. Great. Maybe that translates, but maybe he doesn't. I certainly would like to see 
more evidence of him being potentially able to do it than just wishing, hoping, and praying as a backstage trials, which are entirely fucking different than the real deal. So yeah, I, I'm not sure what the hell's going on with the decision making here. It just doesn't feel well grounded to me. It just feels like it's random and it's all over the place. And you know what? That's perfectly suited for Vince McMahon's mindset in the modern WWE.